now we're recording because I had our I had a, I had the stream on, but like all of us muted. Mm -hmm. So it was just like the, you know pre-stream stuff. I think uh, I think what she will do is just head on just discuss because she's not in a good uh, good um comfortable. You know you know what I'm saying to RP. Yeah. So it yeah, no, it, it, it takes energy, and you ain't always got energy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fine. At least we get to talk about a character. This is session zero. We can just talk about the tone and oh, what are some things uh, where it gets a little bit too much, or what we can't, or what oh, what is okay to, to RP about. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I hope you guys enjoyed the little tidbits of uh, lore that is unique to your character uh, in your journals. It was a lot of fun to write. Yeah, yeah. So feel free to. Um, I I'd like to uh, tell it like happen organically, so don't like tell anyone. Just like let it happen naturally. I feel mm -hmm. like it's a lot more, fun. More, yeah. lot more fun. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, so, um, first thing is first, I'd like you guys to think about if or if you are working for Lume with his agency or if, um, you're just uh, affiliated with him because, uh, essentially the infallible mistress is going to be a sort of like a hub for the characters, a place to hide out, a place to start. It's where the start, like you guys are starting in a tavern. Every good story starts in a tavern, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Lume is a uh, character? Yes. Yes. Okay, and uh, uh, what is your character only up my to? friends call me Lume. Oh. So, Lume X, okay. if you don't mind. My apologies. I'm going to post this actually in the chat because I also have this guide up here so that I remember how to say my character's name. Hey, Lume. Oh, did I? Hmm. I just can do this. So it's uh so if um someone who refers to you only Lume are like your close buddies. Yeah. Just to clarify, what's the gender of Lume? Uh, X? Male. Male. Okay. I know that uh, I know that what's it called? Aaron is uh specifically going gender fluid, referred to as they. <laughs> and <laughs> what about uh, Crimson? I'm assuming it's just her pronouns. Okay. And I'm pretty sure uh, Rook's character is going to be he, him pronouns. Second, tone. Uh, the way that they describe the setting is Pulp Fiction um, with uh, a lot of shades of gray in it. So uh, there's, by all means, definitely crazy grand battles. I mean, like, um, you can have fucking Talenta's, Talenta halflings riding on top of pterodactyls <laughs> hijacking a train. That's the example that they have. It's really fucking cool. Is that what's um, breaking you can up have... a little bit for anyone else? Um, uh, a lot of people are. Okay, then let me switch servers real fast. Ah. Hello? Hello? Fucking wild ride. I tried literally every other American server before we came to that one. Jesus. Yeah, Discord's having some problems. I don't mean it's Discord. Yeah. <laughs> it has a problem like three times a week. But well, at least yeah. it's free. But, mm. um... Anyways, what was I saying? Oh uh, yes, um, so I know that Rook's character wants to be introduced at the very start. So who here wants to be affiliated with uh, Numaix? What is uh, what is Lumix doing? Again, uh, please. Lumix is an ex-gun for hire who is running a uh, problem-solving shop. I haven't decided the name of it yet. Mm -hmm. Finger quotes yeah. around problem solving. Yes, so treat it sort of like Pinkerton in a sense that uh, if there are issues to be solved that don't need to be in legal channels. Also, yeah. hi. Hi, Rook. Hi, Rook. Hello. Hello. Um, Love you, Rook. You can't see awesome. it, but you doing little hearts in the fingers. That's what it sounds like when you do hearts with your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I want to voice activated cool. just so I can have the hearts with the fingers permanently pointed towards her. Oh yes, what did you want to talk to Ken about specifically with uh, details about that? And with stuff. These... There, yeah, there was something that uh, she ran by me. I thought that might have been a really cool idea. Um, with arm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, so you guys are six level characters. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys 
um, a question right now, something that you can uh, answer. Yes, he is an artificer. Would your exploits during the war been public or private? Because uh, mine was incredibly, super strictly private, top secret. Absolutely. Um, mine, mine. I think the word notorious is appropriate here. Okay, so people uh, would know about you specifically because yeah. you're six level characters. Yeah. Um, Eberron as a campaign setting, just to clarify, uh, there are not a lot of characters past tenth level. In fact, fifth level magic is the highest people normally see. So anything higher than that is super rare. Um, and, and, and people are not as strong in, in this. Um, they're not, I shouldn't say strong, but the, they, they aren't as ridiculously powerful as in other D&D campaigns. Uh, this is definitely more about wide, wide magic rather than high magic. So more people know magic, but less people get to that top tier kind of ability, not just magic, but skill. So being six level characters, there is some notoriety, but I want to leave it up to the characters if they want to be a little bit more clandestine with what they wanted. Um, I think uh, Crimson would probably prefer to keep her a low profile. Okay. Um, she's probably well known because uh, she's like a detective, so she's probably uh -huh. like well known in people who need detective work. But other than that, she's like kind of like maybe a bit of an urban legend. Okay. And uh, what about you, Aaron? Aaron makes maps. What do you want? Okay, cool. That, that's uh, it. What do you want? <laughs> that's it. Just all, all they do is make maps. Yep. And Lumanix is no notorious. And uh, mm. what about you, Zikir? Well, what kind of um, fame, if none of, would you like? Um, so we were talking about if, because uh, you're sixth level, would you want there to be public knowledge about you, or if you'd want to be a little bit more kind of behind the curtain? Are you at all like a public figure, or are you a clandestine like type of person? Okay, so you're more clandestine. Cool. All right. Yes. Mm. The other thing is, um, uh, Rook mentioned to me um, she wanted to have a, a a robotic arm as well as a motorbike. I thought it would be cool if, for example, your character Lemaix did that. For oh yeah, them. built those. I mean, that's I'm insanely good with Tinker's tools. So yes, I have a plus nine, eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really good with them. So probably. So maybe, that. Uh, maybe um, your characters already have some sort of a history. It could have been purely professional, Whoa. or it might. Sorry, go ahead. What's up? Um. But uh, you might have tinkered with their arm and their motorbike, because that arm is pretty cool. <laughs> I feel like Lumiax and Crimson might be like colleagues in like the strictliest profession. Like, like not like colleagues in that they work together, but like they work in the same sphere sometimes, and so they might butt up against each other. Contemporaries, yeah. yeah. So, like, they have, like, a familiarity with each other and maybe, like, some sort of grudging, almost friendship, but... Uh... Vocational respect, at the very least. Yeah. And maybe, um, uh, Lumaix, uh, often went to Aaron to get maps of the Yo, area. what do you want? I make maps, map what you want? Maps of places, including places maybe that maps don't normally get made for? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, is, is your character name Zaheer, or... I'm just, saying, I'm just gonna say Rook. Anyway, Rook. Uh, yeah, I didn't think so. Alex told you Zaheer a minute ago, and I was I was like, did he just do that because he saw your name and just said it out loud, or is that actually that's your probably That's literally because I yeah, saw the name I and I read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Zaheer right, was right, her right. name in a game we did the other night. You mm. were there! Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I'm explaining to you. Never mind. I, th I thought you were explaining it to me. I figured you were explaining it to me. Yeah, that's what I was okay. doing. No, I figured that was from the other night. <laughs> this year is going to be the uh, home slash offices of whatever thing you need to set the name yours, okay? Yeah, so, um, what is your character like then, Rook? Like, what's their, what's their deal? Why would we know each other? Mm hmm. Uh, I would assume you helped fix me up, and maybe you have a reputation for keeping quiet about certain things. Could you hear me okay? Yes, yes we are. No, we can hear you hear you really mm -hmm. clearly, actually, like way clearer than usual. I'm mm -hmm. on my phone. I'm not on oh. my computer. 
so that's weird. How difficult would it be to play on your phone? Because, like, that sounds really good. <laughs> Joking. Wow. <laughs> uh, no, but, um... I would assume that you're a person who can keep quiet about certain things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, without spoiling much, the first session will be um, probably one of uh, Rook's contacts contacting her and you probably suggesting the solutions. Because I'm telling you right now, the tone, like, this is very clandestine what they're going to ask you to do without spoiling too much. I could oh. just type boom in private chat. Oh yeah, that'd be fine. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, probably the first thing I'll say is like, well, if you wanted to be secret, why the fuck did you come to me? <laughs> you can't keep secrets, is that what you're saying? Oh, no, 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 done quietly, though. Like, that's not, <laughs> that's not something he does. Okay. Well, it could have been just the circumstance of, uh, severity, you Fair know? Enough. But either way, uh, there is uh, some respect for that. Uh, we can talk about what the characters do, um, can and cannot know. Um, there's there's going to be an air a little bit of mystery with the characters, so we can we can totally have what the characters know, what the characters don't know, uh, versus what the players know, what the players don't know. In a way, like you know, dramatic irony and all that stuff. But uh, if it comes to narrative stuff, try to let it happen naturally, especially those things that I wrote down, because um, I, I have a very strong feeling they're going to show up one way or another, uh, and it'll be neat. If uh, you guys call upon those, yeah. All right. So, uh, like would a would Aaron and uh, and Crimson know each other? Um. Yeah. Crimson needs maps, especially as someone who makes a habit of going into places she's not really supposed to. Um, you need maps. I got maps. I need maps. I got, I got maps, maps. All sorts of places. Hell yeah! Give me the maps. All right. Yes, um, maps are actually quite a quite a big currency because uh, the world is ever changing and the places in Sharn are ever changing. Um, there's a lot of things that happen, and uh, maps and knowledge like that could be just as valuable as a magical sword, um, because uh, the lords in Sharn are super paranoid because it is such a bubble. It is a fishbowl uh, they, they, because there's so many different people. Uh, especially with nobility, like you have all the houses, you have all the emissaries, you have all the uh, emb embassies, all located in a singular quarter. People are paranoid, so they're constantly changing things around. So um, knowing what a layout is like is very important. Uh, or you, you could be hired, for example, to just simply get a map of someplace. All right, so go on. You were about to say something? Okay. Who was what? Uh, sorry, I, uh, I saw uh, Mooney's light flip on, so I thought they were going to say something. Oh, no, sometimes I just tap control because I'm thinking. Mm, mm hmm. All right, so uh, another thing is uh, I'd like you to think of a reason why you'd uh, regular, or if at all, the infallible mistress. So the characters that I've written in for the infallible mistress are your kind of your close buddies. Uh, they'll, they kind of let you get away with most things, except for trashing the place. And ever since the little incident with uh, Lumix and uh, and those um, enforcers, uh, pretty pr relatively quiet. Um, it's very likely that those people that um, have been sent to deal with uh, with um, sprints with Grace uh, very likely are they just don't like the fact that he's an awakened tiger owning a restaurant. Uh, and you, all, you guys are also located on Cliffside, which is a pretty good district for taverns in general, so there's a lot of competition. Could my character be a furry and kind of have a crush on Sprints with Grace? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Sprints with Grace is, um, uh, he, he is, uh, he's definitely a honorable folk. I will refer, I will... Prefer, I will... At Sprints with Grace, uh, comes and made her own persona. What if I was a I will strongly hold myself back from the feral discourse. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you were saying something about Sprints with Grace? Uh, Kent? Yeah, that was Kent. Uh, me? Uh, yeah. Um, I imagine Sprints with Grace is probably one of the only people that uh, Lumaix, uh gets, like, along with. On a personal level, yeah, he's he's a uh, he he doesn't he cuts the bullshit. He's very yeah. kind of a 
he's a straight arrow tells it to you straight um he will he will fucking call you out if uh, you're doing something blatantly stupid but mm -hmm. won't stop you from doing it <laughs> probably over some spirits and in fact he will ask you fucking buy this <laughs> and that's why you have a tab slide <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, um, but yes uh the uh they're, they're a family the people in the infallible mistress are definitely quite literally a family but not quite a family um you have no idea. You, to this day, though, no one understands why Sprints with Grace has named the Infallible Mistress the Infallible Mistress. He has specifically said, no, I did not name it after Yara. A lot of people keep asking him that. There you know. But uh, that's a secret he definitely keeps close to his chest. It's the, one of the few things you actually don't know about him. Uh, Lumaics. Hmm. But um, the uh, the waitress um, absolutely adores you and totally has a big crush on you. Just saying, uh, Lumex. Oh yeah, of course. She she like she always like and especially when it's um quieter in the night, when it's later, when it's just you guys kind of just hanging out. She will try to find as many opportunities to try and clean around your table to listen to your stories. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It's adorable. Also, yes, um... she needs better taste. Yeah, she really <laughs> does. Quiet. Crimson is like quietly worried about her and like will try and suddenly her away. Uh, well, Lume, uh, sorry, Yara, not Yara, fuck. Um, Tiare was there. Uh, Tiare was there when you had dealt with the uh, enforcers. Let's just mm -hmm. say it uh, sparked something. So this yeah, is this yeah, happened a while. Yeah, yeah. Lume, Lume said something really cool. Uh, are any of you guys going to be gourmands, like uh, gourmets and that stuff? Because if you are, you're going to have a very close relationship with Yara. Oh, I think like uh, Crimson might celebrate a mission or a case gone really well. Yes. With a, a nice meal from Yara. Okay, so here's the thing: Yara um will will jump at any chance to cook with gourmet food again. Uh, pretty much her backstory. She's she's talked to you guys about it because she's trusted you enough. Um, essentially, uh, in in the Sky City of Sharn, um, they waste a lot of food, like a shit ton of food. Um, what isn't eaten is just thrown out. But uh, but Yara had decided to try and take that food and feed the poor. Because why the fuck not, right? It's a waste of food. No one's eating it anyways. But let's just say a lot of nobles did not like that, and Yara called them cunts and left. God bless her. Nice. <laughs> but uh, she tried to find work up there, but uh, it's sort of like a blacklist on her. That's why she came down here and... Um, blackballed. Uh, she got blackballed. So <laughs> that, that, Was it blackballed? That's what it's called. Really? I thought it was blacklisted. Okay, interesting. Well, I mean, blacklisting is, it, it's kind of a similar term, but like in Hollywood, they call it blackballing. Yes, absolutely. Like, uh, she's a very good cook. Um, the stuff that she cooks, like, obviously is different when she's just kind of cooking uh, for like the regular tavern folk because you can't afford to get gourmet food all the time. But, uh, you know, like it, she will open a nice, a really nice bottle of wine and cook you guys a very fantastic meal if you bring her the materials. Yeah, I think uh, Crimson definitely has the habit of just, like, filtering something uh, fancy and nice. Some some sort of really nice ingredient when she's in a fancy house and bringing it back to her. Yes. Can we actually uh, say, um, Mooney? Mm -hmm. What's up, Zahir? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Rook? My, my character would definitely have a taste for the finer things, considering yes. some of his background. And, uh... If you've if you've had Yara's food before, it's better than the better than some of the chefs that you're familiar with. Mm. Nice. Can we say, Mooney, um, that perhaps mm -hmm. uh, Lumaix? Uh, even I'm saying his name wrong. Fuck. See, that's why I had the guy. Um, at some point in the past, before uh, he started working out from on top of it, uh, recommended the Infallible Mistress to you after you hired him on his muscle. It's like, oh no, you should go to this place. It's like the best restaurant in town, and and you're like, that's bullshit. But you went there. God damn it, if it wasn't. Oh, that was great. I love that. Absolutely. And now you kind of low key hate that Lume is like put up shop on top of it. You gotta <laughs> see his ass every time you go there. Oh yeah. I'm like, oh my god, this guy. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to hope he's not home. Uh, I hope he's not in. So, what about you, Aaron? Um, are there any uh, personal ties you think you'd have with uh, with these? I would uh, say NPCs? probably more s less less with uh, what was it? S runs with Grace, Sprints with Grace. Uh, yeah, sprints with Grace. Sprints with Grace. Okay, sorry, I'm losing it today. I would say probably less with Sprints with Grace because uh, 
Aaron is known for uh, leaving for long periods of time. Pay, like pays their their you know room and stuff on time and everything, but is known for being gone for long periods of time doing maps and stuff, and then comes back with cool food ingredients. Like, hey, you want to use these? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Yara yeah. fucking loves you. Uh, one, Yara doesn't have to deal with you often, which is good in her books. Trust me. <laughs> Two, you bring you bring her food. What? Uh, Am I that creepy? Thanks. No, it's not that you're creepy. It's more that Yara fucking hates dealing with people. Oh, okay, cool. We have she just wants the cook. That's it. Um, and uh, and you actually uh, you Luma EX. Luma EX, if you want to say it casually, Luma EX. Luma EX. Luma EX. Luma EX. Yes. Okay. I've I've been literally doing that exact same here while you guys are talking, just like here under my breath. <laughs> But anyways, uh, for um, also Tiare would totally act well. Actually, uh, one thing that uh, concerns you that only your character knows is Tiare asked you about the map uh, to make a map of the surrounding area where her parents were killed. Hmm. Hey. All right. But and have you made it for her yet? Uh, hold on. Let me let me pull out one of my D percentile and roll it. Because every time she sees you, she will continue to nag you about it. Highs or lows? Uh, I'm going with highs. No. Okay, she will continue to nag you about it until you finish it for her. Okay. Just something something unique. But uh, anyways, uh, she does have a kind of an idealistic view, but you can sense a, a great deal of sorrow behind her eyes. And that might be why I don't. Yes. Um, but anyways, uh, once you figure out the name, um, God, fucking this is more like Shadowrun than I thought. I hate myself. Ah. <laughs> uh... I promise you it's not going to actually be Shadowrun. You don't have to worry about that other stuff, I promise. Until it actually mm. turns into Shadowrun. Mm. Don't you Until mean. we take a job from a dragon and... Motherfucker! Mm. <laughs> hmm, Alex is just, just racing that. Um, that's going to be another creature now. It can't be a dragon. Can't be a fucking dragon now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm angry. Just, just about <laughs> you furiously scribbling over your notes and crossing out words. No, it's not that. It's like I, I inherently, and inherently made fucking like I tell myself I fucking hate Shadowrun. I fucking make Shadowrun. Anyway. You actually fucking. like the aesthetics of Shadowrun. I mean, you. I really you do. I'm just. I hate it. the system with a fucking passion. Yeah, but you really want to do the aesthetics correctly, and you correctly identified that. Wait, this setting kind of plays itself into that anyway, and then you kind of was like. I'm gonna do this, and I think we're all 100% on board for that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, actually, what I'm gonna do here, real quick, is quickly make a map because I have something you guys can sort of see what Sharon looks like. Um, I'm not going to keep it specifically within Sharon, but it is going to be a majority of where you guys are gonna be. I even have because... a map on the uh, the thing in the background. Oh, cool. Yep. So whenever Let I'm not just... showing the roll twenty thing. Got a map of Sharon. Uh, I actually am. Uh, I really do enjoy this setting. I'm reading through and more and more. I, I like. There are a lot of things that I like about it. It does um, implicit storytelling very well. Yeah, yeah. It's it's good about. Um, it was written in an era where, like, Faerun was extremely popular, and yeah. a lot of people were getting sick of like the alignment system of D and D. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and then and everyone came out of that. Plus steampunk. Hey, it was the '90s. It's true. It's true. Gotta love it. Yeah. But anyways, um, this is just like the kind of the general area. You guys are in the... Uh... Oh, I need to zoom way out. Yes, quite big. You guys are in the cliffside area. Um, right between the line, like on the red line between Cogsgate and Highwall. Somewhere along there. We need a marker somewhere for that. I'm trying to even yes, find once. it. Oh no, memento. All right, got Turkish side, must I? Yeah, yeah, no problem. We got the FOE, so. Yep, around here. Oh, I just like drew a big line. <laughs> well, there's the in line, orange. Yeah. 
Right, so you guys are um, within the refuge because the um, refugees tend to... the This is the Syrian refugees from uh, Seer, who, if you guys remember, the Moorland fucking destroyed the entirety of their country. Mm. So this is the highest population of Seer, uh, people who live in, in high walls. It's actually quite... I'm gone through a bit of a renaissance. Uh, it used to be one of the lower kind of uh, slum area. But because they had brought all their wealth, their income, their trade, their skills, they've slowly but surely made Highwall into the little um, little seer, like new seer, essentially. So. That's cute. Yes, but uh, let's just say um, not all of it is on the up and up. You get that idea. Oh, no. Uh, so uh, you guys are located um, near the cusp of the middle tier, uh, middle tier and the lower tier. So... Uh, the Infallible Mistress is not, like, run-down shady, but, uh, it's, it's scrupulous enough where you can kind of hide out for a few days. And, uh, and you would know that Sprints with Grace would totally cover for your ass. Because, um, there's, let's just say there is a very clear kind of rifle pla placed right above him. That you probably maintain for him every now and then. The Mayix. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we we. I actually probably insisted on doing monthly maintenance because it's such a fine weapon, and he had just been yeah. letting it sit there for like a year straight. And as like that oh, thing. Oh yeah, that you, you do get the that feeling. Thing oiling, you're gonna you're gonna ruin it yes. if you fire it. And it, uh, it yeah, like, you do. <laughs> demanded. Uh, you do get the feeling that he's used it before, and you do get the feeling that he's done adventuring before. But, so he's awakened. The he... Awakened tigers are not like they are like furries, or are they? They're they're, they're tabaxi. They're, they're quite literally what? Tabaxi. But in, I don't in know this... what that Are means. they Anthro? Uh, yes. They're... There you go. Okay, thank you. Because, like, well, my understanding actually from 3.5 was that awakened creatures were just literally the creature's uh, intelligence. So that actually oh, is, is a necessary right. thing to clear up for me. Thank um, you. So, yeah, the Tabaxi are uh, a race in D&D Faerun. They're like, they're, they're cat people. But uh, uh, in this room. So box, yeah. In this, uh, in this setting, they don't natively are there, but they're created because of the morning. So, mm -hmm. in, in fact, um, Sprints with Grace has been alive for a while, but because of the morning, turned into yeah, this yeah, yeah. Okay. creature. So, so uh, he became a buff tiger daddy later in life. Yes. Okay. Buff tiger daddy. Listen, yes. He's quite literally buff tiger daddy. Oh my god, Ari, you don't you don't use Twitter. You don't know about the Tony the Tiger Twitter fiasco. No, I don't. They're now blocking oh, no. all furries on that Twitter account because so many of them were just no. like fucking yeah. they were posting at Tony the Tiger like raw me daddy. <laughs> it was really bad. It was really <laughs> good though, too. I I, I mean, that was I also very good. Like for me, I need to actually do this. I miss so much. All right. So, um, yeah, anyways, uh, are Sorry. there kind of uh, any kind of tone things that you guys? Uh, you can send me a private message later, but uh, things that you want me to avoid with this sort of stuff because I do have a bit of a narrative, uh, kind of taken inspired from one of the the greatest uh, so-called Ebron adventures, which is uh, mm. the Whispers of the Vampire Blade, which is really fucking cool. Um, but, uh, <coughs> any, uh, bless you, any, um, any requests for a tone? Um, uh, real quick. Kent, I did send you a message. Okay, one second. Uh, uh yes, I have read that. Okay. I don't have anything to respond to it, just, I mean, I would be, if the pay's good, L mm -hmm. Lumex would be. Very good. Yeah. I like, then, then we're on board, question. like... And as long as you don't mind, uh... You know who you're hiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um... Fuck, I lost my other train of thought. We were talking Alex, about him. Yeah, Alex, off the start, like, it just maybe, maybe it would be better if you thought, like... Can you think of any obvious, like, content warnings? Just, like... Like, I mean, obviously... Okay, let's start at the bottom. It's D&D, &D, there's gonna be violence. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, the Sharn isn't exactly a picture perfect city on the lower tiers. Um, there mm. is a lot of trafficking of people of several different races. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of crime, and the kind of the cornerstones of crime tend to be dope, human trafficking, and gambling. And in this setting, they're kind of one and the same. A lot of the a lot of the families with that stuff. 
And because Sharn is so big, the guards tend to stay towards the upper tiers. So it is very lawless the lower you go. Oh yeah, actually, if you look at the uh, the stream layout, I, I have the vertical layout of Sharn on the left. That's it's important massive. to note. Sharn's the city of towers. It's fucking tall. And there's a super, like, super extra bougie area where no one else can get to, where the rich people Yes, it's called the Sky the, the Skyward City. Mm-hmm. So that, that is... That, fuck. Yes, um, it is... <laughs> no, you have no idea. I don't even really. I have a basic idea, and I know it goes deeper. It's pretty, um, it is, uh, is the bourgeois the bourgeois, so... Well, uh, Just... as far as content stuff, you already know the only thing that I would need, like, a an actual warning before. Yes. And, uh, Minnie, you were gonna say something, too? Um, I do have a question that's not related to content warning, so I can wait for a bit. Okay. Um... Uh... Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just like, like, like what Ken said, just like a list of maybe like the unagreeable things that you think might come up in like vagueish terms would work. The only thing that I can think of is the, uh, the, the kind of the dirty side of crime, like the, the stuff that no Some one likes more, to think and talk you, about. You mentioned specifically like the human trafficking, so that's probably yes. going to be like, like I'm not yep. upset about things like that being spoiled. Like that's that's worth like yeah. talking about. So. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, like, I, I built a character who wouldn't be empathetic to a lot of stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as long as we, the players, aren't, like, on the super seedy end of it, and as long as it's handled I'm not, not... I mean, handled yeah. in a way that I know that you're probably going to handle it anyway, that's my yeah. only concern, so... The that's, jobs will never involve you, like, killing slaves. Yeah. That's just... This is weird. Um, but, uh, you will probably ha come across things like that, that will get in your way. Uh, side things that will, um, uh, usually would like, um, like Shadowrun in these sorts of games, what they like to do is, uh, they like to play with the idea of morality. Uh, something that I'm not going to do too much because it's D&D. &D. Uh, and two, um, uh, I don't like using those things as obstacles so much. So you won't really see them. They'll, they'll sort of set the scene. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Something well, I mean, Shadowrun, it's, it's a lot about the... L less so than in Cyberpunk, but it, there's still like mm -hmm. a lot about like the corporate structures and, mm -hmm. and that, and that yes. shit. Speaking of which, that's the Dragon Marks. They're the corporate structure. Uh, uh, yeah, during yeah, the war, yeah. uh, During the war, they made so much stupid bank that uh, they, are all, they are actually more financially secure than some of the big five countries. Uh, if I go back over to the, the map here. So... We have the big five, which is Breland, uh, Breland, uh, Valinar, Karnath, Thrain, and on, uh, on, sorry, Breland, Thrain, Karnath, and uh, I think on there. Yes, those are the big, big four. Seer was the big five, but now it's the Moorland. Rip, it's no longer yeah. there. Um, just so you guys know, uh, the reason why this all happens was because it was a hundred years war because uh, some, uh, one of the heiresses of Karnath was supposed to ascend the throne, but people that saw Ondair, Brelins, and Thrain said, no, we want to ascend the throne, and huge civil war. And uh, let's just say, um, you know, like the technological advancements of World War One and World War Two. the reason why all those guns were made was because of World War One and World War II. Uh, so it's very much like that. Uh, in which case, that's uh, sort of the kind of the tone. There's a lot of dreariness in the world, yeah, a lot of a lot of gray. Uh, people want to celebrate the fact that uh, the war is over after 100 years, but to many people, the war isn't over, and to many people, um, it is a very tense cold war that will literally can, at the tip of a dime, can start up again. So it's very tense, hmm. and the irony is that Sharn is a bubble in all of that. However, Sharn has all the major players, all the big corporate, all the big dragon mark houses in one singular location. So it is a it is a melting pot. That's what they described it. It is a melting pot of all these cultures. So something to think about uh, is when your character uh, ends up in Sharn, uh, try to figure out things that your character would like or not like. Try to try to understand that um, this is a a very tense time. And uh, everyone has a personal stake in it. I think. Probably. Yes. Any questions? So, uh, how are we all, like, together as a party? That's another thing I want to say, yeah. 
or a disparate group of individuals with their own interests. And... Don't know if that quite. We, 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 I don't know if our personalities are quite match. It's going to be interesting, but like. I mean, that's going to be the best part. Let's be honest. Yeah, but how are mm -hmm. we going to be like working together? Uh, Rook, would your character want to hire? Uh, suggest to hire. Ken's character, and Ken's character reached out to Mooney and Ari's character, and all end up in the Infallible Mistress. That's would probably, that be a good way to start? Yeah. Uh, why exactly would I have asked to hire them? It would have been more like... Yeah, well, yeah, probably. I or... mean, because currently, right now, after I was fixed up by Ken's character, I'm getting refuge from one of the big houses. Mm hmm In exchange for something. Okay, mm -hmm. so like the plan is to get to to, uh, to without revealing any any details what you said mm -hmm. to me to mo to move the package elsewhere because the package will not be safe where it is. Pretty much, yes. And I need someone who can get me there. AKA would know the way. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I need someone who I'm not good at being sneaky. I am I know what to do if things go wrong, but I need somebody who can maybe make a plan for what happened, what the ideal situation would be. Because <laughs> otherwise, I mean, I'm a huge Dragonborn man in half plate and a gun. <laughs> I I have um, one, maybe two and three if I'm feeling nice, but mostly just the main way of solving problems, and that is gun. So I think that's why I would. I mean, you you would hire me, and I would go up and say like, okay, well, you know, it was for some exorbitant sum, and it was enough to split. And these jokers, I, I, I'm gonna need their help. Mm -hmm. Your character might not like that, Probably but that not. that's even better, you know, narratively. I mean, my character is a combination though of stealthy and fisty. Yeah, but Just if you could that. do this on your own, you wouldn't have hired me, so exactly. I need an expert. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I need someone with arms. I can't exactly be fisty with only... Well, I guess I could be fisty with one arm, but it's a mm. bit more difficult. Less balanced. Sorry, yes. what's this about fisting? Lots of fisting. Okay. Expert fisting. I'm sure you don't fully trust my character, either. He's very well-dressed. He's Alex. What? Why me? <laughs> So in, in this case, I wouldn't, like I wouldn't know your character at all, and you would know my character by his reputation. Yes, well, I, we would have met before when you fixed my arm. Okay, and you okay. Probably so that, know that happened the before. few things I told you, but you wouldn't know the exact details of everything. I mean, I wouldn't have asked you questions, so mm -hmm. would only have been what you offered. Yeah, your little work that makes uh, asking questions is a surefire way to get killed. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Uh, I think aside from that, I think we have the characters and we have pretty much all the, uh, what we need for to start the campaign. So are there any requests campaign wise or do you just kind of want to see it unfold? So does that mean that the first thing is going to be finding a safe house for the package? Would you say? It's going to be basically working out the details of, okay, so package is in dangerous situation we need it in a final situation to be in not in danger so mm -hmm. we're going to need to determine probably several steps of that you know mm -hmm. a, a place to keep them safe in the time being while we work on a greater escape plan and a location of where to take mm -hmm. them do you have anywhere outside of the city that it could go as of right now no because it's got to be somewhere where the houses can't the house. get at it yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's got to be somewhere the houses can't get at it and fucking that's what that's probably honestly what Crimson got brought on for. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that that specific detail. There's hmm. supposed to be safety right now, but it's not really assured. It's not long term. Oh. Anyways. Uh any other questions? I got a pretty good idea how we're gonna be started out. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, good. yeah. My biggest fear. I don't want the whole thing. I, I just don't want. I, I want it to be a side quest, not a main thing. With that. Mm -hmm. that makes I understand. Sense, Alex. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I the the main quest is uh is well. 
hunting. I can tell you that. Mm. It, it sounds like we're probably going to get involved with something, and that's going to be maybe like something that's like happening over the course of like the game. Yes. But it's not like the primary thing that we're working on. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I listen, Alex. I got your number. <laughs> Any who's it's um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, you all you all would have been contacted by uh, by Lumaix, and you're all kind of hanging out in the tavern, and it starts when Rook's character enters with the contact. Uh, would Lumaix have told us what's going on ahead of time? Um, probably. At the very least, um, less details the better, though. Oh yeah, no, and I I agree too. But they're probably gonna see it, right? Physically, eventually, yes. Eventually, but, but probably not yet. Yeah. All you would need to know now is um, I have a very sensitive package that needs to be moved somewhere where the houses can't see it. Okay, gotcha. Cool, got your maps. And, and we both would under everyone would already understand. Well, obviously in Sharn, there's no permanent solution for that, so. It would Sharn in its own, like it's um, Sharn in its own is it's uh, it's like Switzerland, <laughs> uh, yeah. in a sense that if you piss off someone in Sharn, you end up pissing off the entire country. So, yeah. political movement in Sharn is very subtle, like very subtle. Most of the time, people just party up there. That's all they do. That's all they do, just for images and appearances' sake, but. The political moving is very, 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 very subtle. And where they hire Shadow, I mean, adventurers do their bidding for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, no, just with the plan of, like, you know, temporary safe house and then working on a more permanent solution. Permanente yeah. solution. I mean, okay, I won't Crimson ask questions. Isn't stupid, so Crimson knows it's probably a person because no one would do all the, all, go through all of this trouble for an object. I mean, there's some, uh, valuable objects out there. That's true, but, uh, well, then I won't, I won't say what you know, what you figure. But yes, so for the most part, uh, you all are here, and you also get to start with 600 gold, unless otherwise you've already bought some stuff. So feel free to spend that gold when the session, before the session starts on extra things you may or may not want. Oh, yeah, I don't I see prices on anything. Check the book. Like the actual PDF? Yes. What do you mean uh, prices for what? Specifically the magic like, items? You just start with it, them. Well, no, like anything. Like I have, I have like gear or whatever, like regular equipment or oh, items. It should shit. be all, all in the PDF all under mm -hmm. items or not. You just Google it. I did. I don't have like any of the D 5e PDFs actually. One second. Uh, when I googled stuff, I found a compendium on Roll20 that actually had uh, all the 5e stuff and prices. Does it have all the prices? Okay. Yeah. Oh, is there like a bigger... Oh, I think I actually know where I could find that then. Cool. Let me try this. There were very few things that I was able... Like, that I couldn't find when I found that. And then I just messaged Alex and I was like, hey, this. Like, it had weights and prices and all that bullshit. Neat. Mm, this doesn't have prices. As I'd marry. Give me a second. Items list. No. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Memes. I feel it. I'm playing Steampunk Shadowrun, guys. God, God damn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I did say I wanted to play Shadowrun without Shadowrun's rules, and I guess this is me eating my words. Mm -hmm. I apologize. <sighs> I just spilled cold water all over me, and it feels okay. Because <laughs> it, it, isn't it hot? It is very hot, but it was also startling. I'm sorry. My cat hit my face with her tail while I was drinking. <laughs> I jumped a bit. 
And of course, I said that I found that, and now I can't find it. Now I have to go find my history. Gomen Asaris. But yes, uh, roleplay-wise, um, I'm getting the feel that everyone here is, uh, there's a out-for-themselves sort of feel, so it's going to be great that there's going to be a sort of an overarching kind of thing going on. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. I feel like we might all be doing our own thing a lot, and that's fine. I just don't want to overload you. Please. I'll be okay. All this right. is this is this is my training room. Alex is like load me up. Load me up, daddy. Fucking load me up like you'd fucking load up fucking sprints sprints with Grace, Tiger Daddy. God. With, with whatever fuck I always going somewhere with this. Hmm. I think you're just in free association right now, dude. <laughs> okay, that link is where I found like the equipment stuff, and then it was um, uh, down at the bottom. Items based on this: treasure tools, sentient magic items, objects, weapons, adventuring gear, magic items, mounts, and vehicles. And most of those tabs uh, had object or had a uh, list of things that had the price that they were and the weights. Some of them, like the um, sentient magic items, was just like how you do this. Is your player's handbook I'm... just, like, missing the price list for everything? Is my what, huh? And just your, like, player's handbook just, like, not listing prices for stuff? Oh, no, I Ken know. says that he doesn't have the yeah. player's handbook. Oh, so I've just been trying. I've, I found, like, another play on D&D Beyond that seem, they seem to have the prices. D&D Beyond? <laughs> mm-hmm. But yes. Uh... Try to get character icons for me, and I got them already for the most part, so let's see what happens with this shit. Mm. Uh, yeah, we'll need a couple of vials yeah. of acid. Okay. Why not? Why, why, why not? Okay. Um, Alex, I will probably be expanding a little now that I have a little bit more time to do so. Let me know if anything I yes. have is not okay. And if yes. it's not, I will change it. Mm-hmm. Also, um, if you guys want to buy like magic items with the 600 gold, like let me know and I'll give you a price. Like for example, um, plus one studded leather will cost you like 450 gold. They're expensive. Yeah, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. They're really expensive. Um, I mean, an elephant yeah. is 200 gold, so... <laughs> you can buy an elephant. You can fucking find an elephant in Sharn if you Wait, want. Wait, an elephant right. is a vehicle, right? Yes. Or you can have an elephant, an elephant instead of a bike. You can have gonna... an elephant. Rook, where are you going to keep an elephant? Yes. I mean, I have a dinosaur, so I don't know. You know, I did forget to mention that about my character. In addition, <laughs> in addition to all of this, he does have a giant, a giant robotic allosaurus that... Is, is that there. is what probably keeps all the enforcers at bay. Yeah, yeah. Crash Fang's real good about that. Crash Fang is just like sitting there, curled up on the front lawn, just hanging out. It's a robotic Allosaurus. It's actually smarter than a normal Allosaurus. If there's one thing I've learned, it's not to ask questions. See, because constructs don't have their int capped at three. Correct. Motherfucker, forgot you have a goddamn dinosaur. Yeah, I mean, I also play the viol, and it's like a magical viol that, like, makes illusions around me whenever I play it. It just didn't Marvelous. come up in conversation. <laughs> it's it's okay. like one of those things, like, wait, you can you can play an instrument? I, can, I would never have imagined. I'm actually insanely good with it. I have a plus nine. Wow. Nice. See, the thing is, I... Artificers get expertise for free on all their toolkits that they get from their job, or from their job, from their class. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot. Expertise is really good. It is very good. Mm -hmm. It is really, really, really good. Anyways, uh, any other questions? Uh -uh. I'm gay. Can I pull a weasel out of my bag of tricks? I mean, you have to roll for it, but you could possibly get a weasel out of your bag of tricks. <laughs> can we wazzle the weasel? Yes, you can wazzle the weasel. Mm. Weasels wazzle, but they don't fall down. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I like, um... I do like how the vertical mat has, like, the, uh, the underground area, too. Oh god, yeah. The underground area is terrifying. Yep. 
part of the nature though. City of intrigue and political shenanigans. So feel free to like tweak and change your characters around if you want to like fiddle around with it and stuff. Also because none of you guys have a constitution modifier higher than 10. I I wear very heavy armor. Listen, it's fine. I'm dodgy. Look, if I can run away, they can't hit me, right? Right. Yeah, also I shoot people. They don't they don't get to me. Yeah. Okay. I just I just hide. You can't see me. You fucking kidding me? <laughs> Please don't hide in the rain. Don't 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 hide in the rain. <laughs> Hey, Rick, I know that you're doing something, but Alex just told me not to hide in the rain. God damn it. He, d he just went, mm-hmm. Oh, also, my ar armor is adamantite, so I can't yes. for it. So I'm actually pretty yes. pretty safe, I feel. Uh, you're, it's indestructible, too. Mm-hmm. Hey, Real fancy stuff. Yes. Nice. Uh, but that, that should sum up uh, session zero. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. All right, so yeah. next week we got officially started and gives me some more time to flesh out some ideas with your characters too to make more intriguing plot hooks and you guys have your journal stuff so feel free to read through them uh come up with as much or little backstory as you want and write it in your character sheet and i'll, I'll read through it and promise not to ruin your lives i, I will mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.